What's up creators? I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tony Fuentes. Again, once again, we're returning to the Air Lag series where we break down the styles of famous photographers, creators, or films and try to replicate their color grading in post edition. Now, the profile that we're going to break down today is one that you guys suggested in the comment section, which is Teresa Freitas. So creators, this style is really something special, but if you're new to this channel or to this series, I'd like to break this video into two chapters. The first one consists in the analysis or the breakdown of the style, where we check out their color grading, see examples of their photos, and then try to decipher how they edit. And then finally, we're gonna go into the second chapter, which is in Lightroom or the editing software and try to replicate their color grading. So you can skip around with the chapters down here on YouTube if you wanna skip a certain part. So let's jump into Instagram to break down her style first. So creators, here we have Teresa's profile on Instagram, Teresa C. Freitas, if you wanna go and follow her. And she's a Portuguese photographer, a landscape photographer and street photographer. And immediately we can notice how her style is something special, very different to the styles that we normally break down. It's very flat, very desaturated with some pastel colors. Now, before we jump into the details of her color grading, just a reminder that if you wanna learn from Teresa herself, she has her online course on how to color grade. So you can find it here in her bio shop. And that's the best way you can achieve her style by learning directly from her. Remember that the purpose of my tutorials is only to use the profiles of famous people, famous movies, or famous creators as an example to create the exercise and learn how to color grade in the process. So if you want to support the creators and you want to achieve their precise style, most of them have their courses or their presets and LUT shops on their bio site in their biography. So that's the best way you can achieve their color grade. Now let's jump into her style. Now the latest style that she's been going for is this one that we're looking at right now, which is very desaturated with those pastel colors, but in particular notice the exposure, how it's very flat. There's very little contrast in these images. She's raising the blacks, raising the shadows, and then she's reducing the highlights and whites. And there, in, as a consequence, we have a very dim exposure on our images with a very flat look. So this is something that she does throughout her feed, but she has a couple of variants. For example, if we go even down on her profile, we can find this other variant on the style, which is as well desaturated with those pastel colors. But in this case, she has those whites well preserved. Therefore, we have some overexposure in some parts of the image. And as a consequence, these images are a lot more bright than the previous style that we saw. So this set of photos from Venice, they're all edited with her latest style, which is a bit more dim. She's bringing down the whites and highlights, and so we have more information in the bright parts of the image. And then she's raising the shadows and black so we have more detail in the dark parts. So notice how there's very little difference between the parts that are in the shade and the parts that are being hit by the sun. Now, most of the colors in the set are very desaturated with the exception of the blues. So we can see the reds, the yellows, every single color is desaturated, but the blues really pop just a bit. And that's maybe a side product because she's trying to maintain the blue in the sky. She's not interested in achieving a very well desaturated blue in the sky or changing it to a teal or anything like that. And as a result from maintaining that saturation in the blues, every element from, for example, these poles that we have over here or the boats, the blues really start to pop a bit more because they're a bit less desaturated. Now, another thing that you can notice is that most of these images from her feed, from her entire feed, have a warm cast to them. And that's because maybe she's adding some temperature or she's adding a color in the color grading part in light. So in general, her style is quite soft. And we can see it right here in this image, where you can notice how the image is a bit more soft and it has a bit of a haze to it. Now, this is telling me that maybe in the presence tab in Lightroom, she's bringing down the values of texture, clarity, and also the haze. And as a consequence, the image is a bit more soft than normal. So that's the thing that we'll have to play around. Maybe she does it, maybe she doesn't. So those are some of the key elements of her latest style. Now, if we go down to the variants, here we have this one, which is the brighter one. And here we still have that desaturation in the colors, those pastel colors. But now notice how the whites are pure. We have a lot more exposure in this image because she's not bringing down the whites or the highlights too much. As a consequence, the entire image is very bright. You can see it once again over here, how the greens very desaturated. Now, in this case, Notice how the blues are also being affected by the desaturation. So we have to keep that in mind. In general, this is a more desaturated and flatter image, but with those highlights and whites better preserved. And then she has another variant from her latest style, which is still dim, still desaturated, but notice in particular how the reds and the blues really pop. They're a bit more saturated, and that's telling me that she's tampering with camera calibration. Another thing to notice in this variant is how there's a lot more texture and post sharpening. So we have to keep that in mind. It's not as soft as the previous styles. 
Okay, great. So I think I have everything I need to replicate Teresa's profile. We're going to jump into Lightroom and start editing. First of all, we're going to create the base or the latest style, which is desaturate with those pastel colors and that flat exposure. And from there, we're going to create two variants. The one which is a bit more bright and more flat and faded out. And then the second one, which is a bit more punchy with those reds and blues more saturated. So we're going to jump into Lightroom, but before that, I'm going to remind you that these three presets that we're going to create, I'm going to add them to the Airlight Preset Pack V2 in case you want to check it out and support me. There you're going to find all the presets that we create throughout this series in this new season. So link up here to my shop. That's the best way you can support me and ensure I don't start to them. Having said that, let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. So creators here in Lightroom have all these images, all are short in sunny days, although some of them are a bit underexposed, some of them are a bit overexposed. But I'm gonna select this one of Venice, and with D on our keyboard, we can go to the develop tab. Okay, so starting off, what we want to achieve, first of all, is the flatness or the low contrast that she has on her images. Now, I have a feeling that basic corrections isn't gonna be enough, and maybe we'll need to combine all these tools that we have over here, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, with the tone curve, but more on that in the future. Now, first of all, temperature, tint, exposure, and contrast, these values, I don't like to move them. I like to leave them at zero and not include them in the preset. So these are the values that I'm gonna move to adjust the preset to other photos, which are maybe exposed in a different manner. So let's start off by creating the most recent preset that we saw on her feed, the one which is a bit more dim and opaque. So highlights, and white. Remember the highlights and white, we want to bring them down so we have more information in the bright parts of the image. And opposite to that, the shadows and the blacks, we're going to pull them up almost to 100%. So we have some, um, some more information in the dark parts of the image, but also we have less contrast. So let's start off with the highlights. I'm going to pull them down around the minus 85% is going to be enough. Then the shadows, I'm going to pull them up and immediately you can see how there's more information in the dark parts of the image. Now, I don't want to go too far, maybe around the plus 75. Then the whites, these ones, I'm going to pull them down all the way to the minus 100. And the blacks, I'm going to do the opposite. I notice immediately how the image has a lot more information in it. Now, it's not quite enough. It's not as flat as Teresa's style. So what we're going to do is go to the tone curve. And here we can use the parametric tone curve or we can use the dot tone curve. So right here, I'm going to use the dot tone curve just because I can control these two points individually without affecting the center. So what I'm going to do is pull the blacks, which is this point over here. I'm going to put it up just around the output of 19 in the Y axis. Immediately, you can notice how the image is a lot more bright. and will have more uh, information in the darkest parts of our image. And then I'm going to do something similar with the white. Just going to pull it towards the left. Around the 240 is the input. And with Y on our keyboard, we can notice the difference. And in the original image, we had the natural contrast of the shade created by the buildings. And now we have a flat image that has a lot of information in the shadows and in the highlights. We're basically blurring the line between shadows and highlights. So it's looking quite nice right here, but it's not quite enough still. We have to move down to the present tab as well. So how is the tone curve working right now? Well, we're pulling the blacks, but also we're pulling the whites up and therefore all the other points which should be in the middle are being raised just a bit. So the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights, every single part of this image is being raised. And in this way, we're basically taking away all the blacks, all the shadows of the image, and making the image a lot more flat. Okay, next, let's move down to the present tab. Now in the present tab, we don't wanna to go towards the positives. Otherwise, with these tools, if you go towards the positives, you have a more contrasty and more sharp image. This isn't what we want. We want to go towards the negatives. So the only value that I'm gonna to go towards the positives is gonna be the texture, just to make it a bit more sharp. Around the 12% is gonna be enough. But otherwise, the clarity, I'm gonna to go to the negatives something, uh, the same value, but inverse. And then the haze is gonna be very important because if we go to the positives, as you can see, the image is a lot more clear. We want to go towards the negatives just to add this haze effect or this faded effect to the entirety of the image. So I'm gonna go quite harsh around the minus 30% and immediately you can notice how the image is a lot more faded, something that we saw in some of Teresa's images. So it's looking very much like Teresa's style. Now let's move down to color. Now, the first value that we're gonna move is vibrance. Now, vibrance and saturation are quite different. Vibrance is a bit more selective with the colors that it moves. So we're gonna go down with the vibrance, just pull it down ever so slightly, around the minus 15 or minus 16%, just to make the image a bit more desaturated. Next, we're gonna skip for the time being HSL. We're gonna go into camera calibration. Now, in camera calibration, we want to make emphasis on the blue tones and in the reds in particular of the entire gamma. 
So what I'm gonna do with the blue primary is just pull up the saturation. Immediately you can notice how the blues in the boats in the sky start to pop just a bit more. I don't wanna go all the way to the extreme, maybe another 38 to 40% is gonna be enough. And then the red primary also, I'm gonna put it up around 30%. And now these two colors really start to pop. You can see it over here. If I deactivate camera calibration, this is before, and this is after just adding a bit more punch into these scammers. Okay, so the preset, Okay, so this preset is basically finished. One thing that remains is color grading. So we're gonna go down to color grading. And remember that I noticed that there was a creamy tint into the entirety of the image. We're gonna add a color with the global color wheel over here. So I'm gonna add some saturation and find the color. I think it's gonna be this one. The hue is around four, 40%. And saturation, I don't wanna go to the 72. I wanna pull it down just to be a slight touch to make the image a bit more warm maybe around the 7% is gonna be enough. And as you can see, it's very minimum. This is before and this is after. It just makes the image a tad more warm. So this is the before and after, and I think the preset looks quite nice. Let's save this preset and then apply it to another image to see if we need to modify it. So I'm gonna to go to the left panel and under presets, select the plus sign, create a preset. And remember that exposure, contrast, white balance, we want to unmark them. Also detail, we didn't add any sharpening. Lens corrections will depend on each lens that you use for each image, so don't want to include it, nor transform, nor effects for this case. And we're gonna create it. Okay, so we have this image in Seville. Let's apply the preset, and this is the before and after, and it looks quite nice, actually. Look, the blues are retained in the sky. That was something that we had in mind. Then we have that low contrast compared to the original, and therefore we have a lot more information in the shadows, and it basically looks like a painting. So I think it looks very well. How about over here in this image of this dude in the ferry? Uh, let's apply the preset once again. And there we have it before and after. Yeah, it's faded out, it's flat, it's desaturated, everything that we were looking for. Okay, so I think we nailed this preset. Now let's move on to the variants. Let's start off with the one which is just a little variant on this one, a bit more saturated with a bit more clarity. So let's select an image. Let's start off with this one that I took in LA. And this one will work perfectly because we want more saturation on the reds in particular and also in the blues. So let's start by working with the preset that we just created and then we're just going to alter it. Now in this case for this preset there are a few things that we're going to change. First of all the dehaze. We're going to pull it down, draw it down just a bit. We don't want it to be so washed out. Just going to pull it down to make it a bit more sharp, a bit more contrasty, maybe around minus 10%. It's going to be enough. Then I'm going to move down to HSL. Basically all the other values are going to be left just as they are, but in saturation, we are gonna alter some of the colors. First of all, the blues and the aquas, we're gonna pull them up just to make them a bit more dramatic, a bit more emphatic around the plus 45 is gonna be enough. And we're gonna do the same with the reds. And immediately notice how the bus starts to be a bit more dramatic, a bit more, um, starts to pop up just a bit more. Maybe around the plus 30% is gonna be just enough. And then opposite to that, I'm gonna desaturate the other colors just to make these two the center of the image or the edit. Just gonna pull down the oranges around the minus 15. Gonna do the same with the yellows. And as you can see, it affects a lot of the greens in the palm trees. And do the same with the greens, purples, and magentas. So at the left, we have the first preset that we created. As you can see, it's a bit more washed out, a bit more desaturated. And on the right, we have the new one, which is just a little variant, a bit more saturated and contrasty. Now, one thing that I was missing was the clarity. So in this case, I'm gonna reduce the clarity all the way to zero, just to make it a bit more sharp, and add a bit more texture, maybe around 20%. And as you can see, this image is a bit more sharp than in the previous uh, preset that we created. So it's looking quite nice. Let's save it and let's then create the third variant. So I'm gonna to go to the left panel over here, plus sign and create. Okay, so the last preset that we're gonna to create today is the one that we saw further down on her feet, which is a bit more blown out, a bit more desaturated and no emphasis in specific colors. So this one has pure whites and pure highlights. So starting out, what we're gonna do, um, this is the first preset that we created. We're gonna work off that one. The highlights, I'm going to return them to zero by double clicking the name and also the whites. And immediately you can notice how the image is a lot more bright than in the previous effect that we just created. Then in vibrance, I'm going to pull it down a bit more around the minus 25 just to make the image a lot more desaturated. And then I'm going to move down to camera calibration. And in this case, we want to undo what we did for the blues and for the reds. We don't want any specific color to really pop above the others. So just going to double click blue primary 
and double click red primary so they're at zero and we have a flatter image as a consequence. So immediately you can notice how this image is looking a bit more desaturated and a bit more bright. Now finally we're going to go down to color grading and this effect or this preset had a bit of a magenta or a purple tint added. So we're going to do that maybe you can deactivate it if you don't like it but I'm just going to add some saturation and move the slider around maybe this color and obviously the saturation is a bit too much so I'm going to go maybe with 10% around these values and there we have a very nice magenta tint in the entire image. And there we have it guys, we have this light variant which is a bit more desaturated, a bit more exposed and with that purple or magenta tint in the entire image. So I'm going to save this one once again and it looks quite nice. So here I have this image that I took at the beach in Barcelona. So let's apply the presets and see how they differ. So here we have the first one that we created which is called dim. In this case this image is a bit overexposed so I would adjust the exposure just a bit. And there we have it, desaturated, flat and very warm it was what we were looking for then we have the variant which is a bit more colorful and immediately you can notice how it's a bit more sharp and the blues really start to pop just a bit more and finally we have the light version that is just a bit more overexposed and overall more flat in the general sense in terms of the colors how about this one let's apply first of all the base preset or the dim preset that we created immediately you can notice how it's a lot more desaturated i think this image would fit perfectly in her feet then let's select the dim color which just adds a bit more saturation into the reds into the blues and a bit more sharpness and finally we have the light preset that adds that overexposed look and a bit more faded and a bit more desaturated i think we achieved quite nicely the effects of teresa freitas so there you have it guys, a very unique and special look from Teresa Freitas and it was quite interesting to achieve it. In particular, I liked the part where we had to use the basic corrections, but it wasn't enough and we had to use the tone curve as well to achieve the flatness that she has in her style. That's quite an interesting method. And remember that this is just my interpretation on her color grading. But if you want to support me, you can find these three presets in the LRAC preset pack V2. There's the link to my shop. Also, you can find my personal LUTs, my personal presets that I use to edit every single video like this one or every single photo that I post on Instagram. So that's a great way you can support me by um, buying one of my products and hopefully they help you to edit in a faster manner. Other than that, guys, that's going to be it for today. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you and I'll see you in the next one.